James chapter 1, verses 17 to 27. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and contributes in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceives themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Loving God, open our minds and hearts to your living word, that it may be planted deep within us and bear good fruit to your praise and glory. Amen. The great church reformer Martin Luther had a very low opinion of the letter of James. He called it an epistle of straw and would have happily torn it out of the Bible. He felt that James was emphasising works, actions at the expense of faith. Paul's teaching on being put right with God through faith alone, trusting that grace and mercy of God and not relying on our own worthiness or our own actions. I think Luther did slowly re, re, um, retake that, that interpretation and began to value James later in his life. But to begin with, he mistook what James was about. Because James is gospel. There is the gospel message there of God's generous love, of God's mercy, of God's saving word in Jesus Christ. Maybe written in a different way to that of Paul, but gospel is there. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, 
that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. That is the grace of God working in our lives and the life of our world. In our con consumer society, where everything has a price, everything is bought or sold, we need to come back to that sense of gift, the gift of life, the gift of God's love, the gift of God's word stirring within us, the gift of the good news of Jesus bearing fruit in our lives. Think for a moment of what you have been given by God and give thanks. Here is a God who is not fickle or changeable, rather, as James describes God, the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Perhaps God's greatest gift is God, unchangeable, faithful, dependable, always present, always there. A reality that we see shining through the life of Jesus, a reality that we celebrate as we share bread and wine in his name. So much is shifting and changing in our world and in our own personal lives. But God is constant, full of light, full of love. So remember, James does bring us gospel. God is not distant, but plants the word of truth in our lives that word that will challenge us, that will guide us, that will refresh and save our lives. There's so much that is fake and distorted in our world, in the media today, in the voices around us, trying to take our attention. We need to come back again and again to that word of truth that word of truth we see in the life of Jesus. But we can't just listen to those words, to those reassuring words of God's love. We have to take them deep within us and in our lives. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, quick to listen. We need to be receptive and listening not just to the words but absorbing them into our living. This is another great theme of the letter of James, that it's not enough simply to accept and hear the gospel. We have to absorb it into our lives and our lifestyles. We'll be exploring that theme more in the, the weeks ahead. But James gives us this picture of a mirror. And we look into the mirror and then we turn away and we forget what we see. But then we look at the mirror again and this time we look deeply and we see God's image, even within us. We see the image of Jesus, even in us. And we take that image to heart. And we live out that way of being a child of God in our own situation. In the words we speak, in the relationships and the actions that we undertake.
So we begin this journey with James. We ask ourselves, what actions does that word bring in our lives? James has a particular concern for the vulnerable in the world and a great desire for integrity within the followers of Jesus. We want God to reclothe us in our rightful minds, to forgive our foolish ways.